Hey everyone, welcome to Illegal Alien Racing. If you're going to get into karting, I want to warn you about one thing. There are going to be some unforeseen expenses that you're going to experience, and I experienced one. I'm getting ready to sell my Sodi cart with a VLR engine, so I went to crank it up to make sure it started before and ran before I posted it online for sale, and it just would not crank. So I've got a flywheel and a Bendix that we're going to replace. I'm going to have Doug do that for me and uh, show you what that's like and kind of tell you how much that cost as far as for the parts go um, and we'll, um, we'll we'll show you the process hi I'm Doug and uh, I'm here helping the illegal alien racing out with his uh, VLR um, it won't start due to uh, a starting issue that's usually caused by a flywheel and a Bendix problem on these uh, Vortex VLR engines. So it's a fairly common issue. They made these out of aluminum and they tend to strip out pretty easy. Uh, and for some reason, uh, the Bendix, uh, this is a, called a Bendix, uh, it's what engages into the flywheel. Uh, for some reason, these quit working too and you normally have to replace them as a pair. So that's what they're doing. It's not a really hard job but you do have to have one special tool uh, and some allens and things like that. Taking the clutch nut off it's on the end of the crankshaft nut washer and then you have the clutch drum there's a bearing in there these bearings have to be cleaned every once in a while lubed up there's another washer behind it this one's pretty dirty bearing looks pretty good needs to be cleaned um, and then we have the another nut here that's got to come off this is your clutch puck and then the flywheels behind it you gotta hold the flywheel and do the nut for the clutch puck. Got a washer behind it. It's bows out on one side and the 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 uh, curved side needs to go in towards the clutch. This is a puller, clutch puller. This will screw into the clutch like this just a little bit didn't take much and then and then the uh, whole assembly will pop off as like that so this has got a lot of metal shavings from the Bendix it's hitting the flywheel and it's chewing the flywheel up so we got the flywheel and clutch assembly and this doesn't look horrible, but it's it is chewed up a little bit on the edges. So uh, this is where the the Bendix chews onto the teeth, and the teeth are chewed down, and they just don't mesh correctly. So um, you have to replace the the uh, flywheel, and then that's your Bendix. So the has three uh, five millimeter Allen bolts. On the clutch, to hold the clutch onto the flywheel. That's all got to come off. Sometimes they just slide off, sometimes they don't. So here's what I normally do. You can take and put this on and turn it, and it'll push off the clutch. This tool pushes the clutch off the flywheel. Like that. So there's a small needle bearing back inside here that uh, this goes into, the spindex. And this is the gear. The, the starter is right here, and the starter turns this gear, which in turns, when it turns it, it pushes this out into the flywheel. And so when that basically comes out, it engages into the, into the flywheel and turns the motor over. And you have to put this in first before you put the new flywheel on because this will not come out with the flywheel on. If you put this on wrong, it will literally push this up and it will not be in position. So you have to be kind of careful about it. You gotta line it up with the flywheel has a, like a cutout for it. Yeah. 
Then we put our nut and washer back on. So you put the washer back on with the, the flared side out, nut on, all that gets tightened up. So you tighten this up. It doesn't have to be extremely tight, but fairly snug. Clutch puck. Just looks like a hockey puck. That's why we call them that. Looks pretty clean. You want to check these brut these shoes here. Make sure they look good. They're not burnt, worn down. Looks pretty good. So there's an alignment pin on the clutch puck that lines up into this hole here on the flywheel. So you just lines up like that and it will not press all the way on until you tighten the bolts down. You want to just torque tighten them down evenly so the clutch pulls up onto the flywheel all the same. I just kind of turn them a little bit at a time each one until they all kind of stop. Okay and then we take our trusty screwdriver to hold the flywheel. You just put a little torque on it. These don't have to be extremely tight, but obviously you don't want them loose either. Clean this uh, cover off for this uh, Bendix. I was like to put a little bit of lithium grease uh, in on the shaft here. Keep it nice and lubed up. Two screws. Now, is this cover something that you should always keep tight, make sure it's snug? Yeah, you need to check them. It'll go loose, won't it? It is just a plastic cover, so yeah, definitely need to kind of... Does this affect the way the Bendex engages or anything? Yeah, if it's loose, it won't engage correctly. So it needs to be tight. It holds everything in place. So all this is pretty dirty. Take some brake cleaner, clean this, and then the bearing too, and re-loop the bearing with some lithium grease. Um, always wanted check your teeth these wear out quite a bit so if they are worn or curved you want to replace this uh, gear this drive gear clean the bearing you want to make sure that uh, these are not like brown or black color uh, that means they've been run dry for too long if they turn color they should be nice nice and pretty and should rattle inside the cage. Put a small dab of lithium grease, work it in, good to go. You have a washer, it's got a little bevel on the inside, the bevel goes towards the clutch. Your bearing goes on, clutch drum goes on, make sure it turns. You have another little smaller washer and your nut with the um, edge or uh, this little edge here goes to the inside and so the chain will clear the nut. Tighten that down. Rock and roll. Put your uh, clutch cover back on. Three bolts. Snug down all three. It's plastic so they don't have to be super tight. Uh, we're tightening down the motor clamps. Check your chain tension after you get it all done. So this is our air box. Just putting it back on. Tighten the clamp up. And she's ready.
All right, Doug, can you give people tips on how to start the VLR to try to avoid damaging the Bendex and the flywheel? So if these have been sitting for a while, you know, a few weeks or a month, uh, the fuel usually uh, come, comes back, drains back out of the carburetor from the line. You'll have a big air bubble here in the fuel line. So you need to get the fuel sucked back into the carburetor. And just hitting the starter button will just spin the motor over and it doesn't suck very well. So you need to put your hand over the uh, intake trumpets to uh, get the fuel to, to, to pull back up in the carburetor. But you while you're hitting the... Uh, while you're trying to start the it. The green start button. Yep. Now, so, when you're hitting the green start button, are you just keeping it pressed for three yeah. seconds? Yeah, we just hold down on it and choke it and watch your fuel. As soon as the fuel hits the carburetor, give it another second or two and it should fire up. Uh, take your hand off at that point. Don't. I've seen people leave their hand on. Oh, it over chokes the motor, dumps a lot of fuel in it and floods it out and then it won't run. Then you got other problems. What you don't want to do on these VLRs because of the aluminum flywheel is, is on and off the green button. You don't want to, you know, hit it and then off, hit it and off, hit it and off. You want to at least hold it down for a little bit. If it doesn't start, then stop pushing the button. When you go to start, re try to restart it, push the green button, hold it down for a bit, uh, and and it should start up unless there's a problem. Now also too, it's important to know that your battery should be fully charged when you... Very important. You have to have a fully charged batteries on the on these engines. What happens if you don't? Well, the bin, you, then you have a weak start, uh, weak voltage, and the Bendix won't engage into the flywheel accurately enough or all the way and and then it strips out teeth on the flywheel and we start all over again and you're into this situation right and you probably don't have a friend named doug right that can do this for you that's right all right doug well thanks a lot for your help you're welcome till next time